Coming up on 7 News today, spring enrollment at Northwestern is up. How much? We have the numbers. Plus, last week was Spare Week. We'll show you the exclusive footages of different events that took place. Also, Becky is in with the latest Ranger basketball results. Good to hear. 7 News starts now. Broadcasting from the campus of Northwestern Oklahoma State University, bringing you the area's latest news and sports, this is 7 News. Hello and thank you for choosing 7 News today. I'm Jesse Schroeder. And I'm Xin Xin Liu. Our top story today, enrollment for spring semester at Northwestern rose nearly 6% from a year ago, according to figures in a pre preliminary enrollment report presented to the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education. Total enrollment for the current spring semester is over 2,000 students, an increase of 120 students, or 5.8 percent, from the 2009 term. Now, the main campus here in Alba reported 1,335 students enrolled in spring classes, an increase of 100, or 8.1 percent, from a year ago. The sum of Northwestern's campus and outreach enrollments is slightly larger than the total headcount figure because some students take classes at multiple, uh, multiple sites. Spirit Week officially ended last Saturday. 7 News reporters Becky Burke and Callie Crisp have a recap of last week's activities. This past week, Northwestern celebrated Spirit Week. On Tuesday, there was a movie night at Rialto featuring Extraordinary Measures, Tooth Fairy, and It's Complicated. On Wednesday, there was a pep rally in Percival Fieldhouse. The pep rally featured many opportunities for Northwestern students, including competitions, prizes, and a students versus faculty basketball game. There was a dodgeball tournament on Thursday, followed by Ranger Red and Black Friday. On Saturday, both the women's and men's basketball teams played in the afternoon with the Hall of Fame ceremonies taking place at the halftime of the men's game. Afterwards, the alumni basketball game took place, including cheerleaders, band members, and basketball players. In the spring semester, the student government will be hosting Bahama Breakaway downtown on the square on April 22nd, complete with inflatable games, food, and fun. Vince Lauderdale, SGA president, is here to share his story of how the week went. Uh, I think it's important because uh, in the spring you don't have a lot of uh, activities where you can get the students out and interacting with each other. And I think Spirit Week is huge in getting people, you know, out of their dorm rooms or out of their houses and actually get them involved on campus. How was Spirit Week as a whole this year? It went really well. Uh, Tuesday night was the movie night and we had quite a few people show up for that. Um, Wednesday night was the pep assembly and I thought that was uh, very successful. Also with the student faculty game we had a lot of people stick around and a lot of people play. Um, and then Thursday at the dodgeball tournament, we had a lot of teams show up, so it, overall it turned out really well. Do you encourage students to attend Spirit Week? Oh, yes, definitely, definitely, because it gives you something to get out there and at least get out there and meet new people, um, maybe people that you wouldn't necessarily have met just walking around. Well, don't forget, Bahama Breakaway is scheduled for April 22nd, and if you have any questions, contact SGA President Vince Lauderdale. Members of the Student Nurse Association here at Northwestern hosted a mini health fair this Monday. Nursing students checked blood pressures and gave suggestions and health information by creating display boards. Let's take a look. Right now what we're doing is we're putting on a mini health fair for the students at Northwestern. It's a way for the Student Nurses Association to give back to the Northwestern community. And what we're doing is we're using the model from the American Heart Association. They have the Simple 7 and what that is is we're looking at uh, displaying different aspects of those, each one of those seven steps. According to the American Heart Association, um, as long as you don't have an underlying disease process such as diabetes or hypertension, then they recommend that all healthy adults ages 18 to 65 should be getting at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity activity five days of the week, which examples of moderate intensity activities are walking, dancing, horseback riding, yoga, volleyball, any aerobic exercise that is considered moderate. Everybody knows that smoking is bad for you, but we thought we'd push it to a little bit, provide more information and provide statistics to, to the number of 
deaths that are linked to smoking. And over here we have like the body systems that are usually affected by <laughs> tobacco in your system, like your brain, your mouth, you could have cancer in your mouth, heart, lungs, the skin, the muscles. And over here we also have information regarding like medication or interventions you could use to help you quit or kick the habit. Providing information on sexually transmitted diseases, uh, I have quite a few um, STD statistics and it is on the rise. That's why I think it's very important that we um, educate people about the signs, symptoms and ways that it's transmitted. Now for more information about SNA and the Mini Health Fair, contact Birch at the email address that's there on your screen. Last semester, 7 News was informed about students having to wait for a long time for their food in the student center. Coming up, we will show you if the problem is solved and how you can cope with it on today's Campus Watch. Also, a sorority here on campus has received an honor of having the highest GPA in the region. We'll show you the details. Keep it here. We'll be right back. You're watching 7 News, the number one collegiate newscast in Oklahoma with Ashton, Austin, and Becky. This is 7 News. In the classroom, I turned my head over this way and there's a game banger looking at me, you know, mad dog me throwing signs up under the table. I feel real scared for my life. And during that time, I wouldn't go to school. My mom would tell me, like, what are you doing for yourself? You're not doing nothing. She encouraged me to go back to school. My neighborhood is a dangerous place. What's pushed me to graduate is my mother walking down the aisle, hearing her scream for me. I want to graduate from my mom. She watched this is yell at me. You got to graduate. You got to get out of high school so you can get your diploma. And I'm going to make it. And I'm going to be somebody in life. Glucose plus oxygen. I'd like to pass them back to you now. Four chemical types of endoplasmic reticulum with ribosomes in three local and without copy of the skeletal and the cells. Four chemical types of velocity of the skeletal and the first of the lobes of the cortex. She's got the drive, the energy the heart, and the talent. Pre-med. But she wouldn't be here without your help. Please support the United Negro College Fund because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. My name's Lisa, and in nine years I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, Lisa. I'll start drinking in eighth grade. And I'll do some things I don't really want to do. So by the time my parents talk to me about it, alcohol won't be my only problem. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. My parents won't believe it could happen to me. for us today. We'll see you next week. Welcome back. Members of the Delta Zeta sorority at Northwestern Oklahoma State University have been honored for having the highest cumulative grade point average in Region 5 for the spring 2009 semester. Northwestern's Delta Zeta sorority members achieved a 3.49 GPA to place third overall in the nation behind the University of Florida and Northwestern University. There are 17 regions that make up Delta Zeta sororities. Delta Zeta sorority is collectively known for the, having one of the largest numbers of college chapters along with 250 alumni chapters in all 50 states, as well as the United Kingdom and Canada. To learn more about Northwestern's Delta Zeta sorority, go to our website, nwosu.edu backslash Delta Zeta. 
Last semester, students were complaining about having to wait too long for their food in the student center. However, have things changed after almost three months? 7 News went back to find out what the problem is and shows you the ways to save time when getting lunch on today's Campus Watch. Well, when I come to the student center, it's usually about a 30 to 45 minute wait just because I get out of class so late. And so I'm usually here around 11, 30, 12 and the line's already like pretty long. Northwestern student Shailen Jones talked to us about waiting in line for a long time to get food here in the student center cafe. Especially when I just see like one person working and I know they can get more people to help out, especially other students. But, and I'm in a hurry because I have like class at one, so I want to have like time to eat and enjoy my meal with my friends. But it's okay. I mean, it's food. Well, back in October last year, Campus Watch team was informed that there is always a huge line at the student center. Students have to wait from 15 to 20 minutes to get their food. And when we talked to the manager of Chartwells at that time, he said that they were working on things to make it a little faster. However, Campus Watch team was called for help again. According to some students, the student center is a great place to eat at. However, it is always overwhelmed the students during lunch. Some of them even think that it got worse this semester than last year. Uh, it normally takes 15 minutes. I don't like it because like, sometimes I have to go to my next class and like, I don't get to eat lunch sometimes. So it makes me mad. Well, according to the manager of Chartwells, there is not much they can do to help fix this problem because it takes time to cook the food for each student individually. However, he did suggest the students to come in around 11.30 or 1.30 because there are now as many people. Also, students should have their ID or cash ready when they get their food so they don't hold up the line. If you have any Campus Watch problems or a problem on campus that you want us to look at and take care of for you, give us a call. 327-8465. Another earthquake shook towns east of the metro Sunday night. The 2.8 magnitude earthquake happened around a mile east of Jones. Now more than 43 earthquakes were recorded in Oklahoma in 2009, which is an unusually high number. According to the Oklahoma Geological Survey, 27 of the earthquakes that were felt occurred in Oklahoma County, County and another seven were located in Lincoln County. Three earthquakes have been recorded near Jones since the start of 2010. Coming up next, Becky is in with the latest Ranger basketball and baseball results. Stay tuned, sports is next. Tick, 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 massive tick, heat tick, waves, tick, heat waves, tick, severe droughts, tick, 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 devastating, devastating hurricanes, tick, 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 our future. Is up tick, tick, to you. Tick. Go to fightglobalwarming.com while there's still time. Anyone else? My name is David, and in eight years, I'll be an alcoholic. I do. I'll start drinking in middle school, just at parties. But my parents won't start talking to me about it till high school, and by then, already be in some trouble. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. The thing is, my parents won't even see it coming. So start talking Who's next? before they start drinking. The bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, and what do you think he saw? What do you think he saw? What do you think he saw? The bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, and what do you think he saw? I was hanging out with some people, now I realize I shouldn't have. The work was so hard, it was just going fast, fast, fast. I got kicked out of school, and nobody cared about me, so I don't care. I sort of got messed up into gangs and other stuff. School was very difficult. I was expelled from school. I mean, the one person who really got me to go back into school was my friend Kevin. At my friend's graduation, I'm going to be the loudest one there. Because if you don't have anybody while you're in school, then there's not really a way to get through it. And now, 7 News Sports with Becky Burke. 
back, Northwestern Oklahoma State outfielder Chris Williams was named the Sooner Athletic Conference Player of the Week for the week of February 8th through the 14th. Williams, a senior right fielder from Vidalia, Louisiana, batted .571 with a 1.857 slugging percentage. He had three home runs, seven runs batted in, and five runs scored in two wins over Mount Marty College on Saturday, February 13th. Northwestern's Ranger baseball team won three games of the four-game series with Mount Marty, sweeping the Lancers on Saturday, 9-2 and 15-10, and splitting on Monday, falling 11-8 in the opener and taking the series finale 4-1. The Rangers and Lancers both tallied 10 hits in the opening game of the series on Saturday, with the Rangers coming out with a 9-2 victory. In Game 2 on Saturday, Northwestern used a 7-run first inning leading to the 15-10 win. On Monday, during Game 1, Mount Marty took a 3-0 lead after 3 innings, then they tacked on 7 more runs in the 4th. Northwestern scored a run in the 4th, 4 runs in the 5th, and then made a run for it in the 7th, but that didn't keep the Lancers from going home with the win. The Rangers jumped out to a 3-0 lead in the final game of the series, scoring 3 runs in the 2nd inning. Northwestern will head to Austin, Texas for doubleheaders on Saturday, February 20th and Sunday, February 21st against Houston Tilliston University. Along with the past two home games this weekend, both the Rangers and the Lady Rangers basketball teams faced Oklahoma City University this past Thursday. The Lady Rangers fell to OCU 77-50. The Lady Rangers shot 37%. They held the Stars to 5 of 17 from beyond the arc. The Rangers also fell to OCU 78 to 65. Northwestern shot 42% in both the first half and second half. The Rangers canned 7 of 23 pointers and hit 6 free throws in 11 attempts. Northwestern took a one-point lead with 48 seconds left, but the advantage slipped away from the Rangers with Mid-America coming away with a 73 to 69 victory on Saturday afternoon. Trailing by 13 at half, Brandon Brown got Northwestern right back in the thick of things, adding three trays during the first three minutes of the second half. With the Rangers down 68-65 to with six seconds left, Marshall Bell hit a fadeaway three-pointer while being hacked, tying up the game. Bell sunk the free throw to put Northwestern up by one, but Charlie Shorter canned a three with a second left, putting the Rangers' hopes for a win out of reach. Northwestern was held to five threes while collectively shooting 38%. Brown finished with 23 points and 6 rebounds, while Brandon Dixon wasn't far behind with a double-double of 21 points and 11 boards. Northwestern takes on Oklahoma Baptist in Shawnee on Thursday, February 18th for an 8 p.m. tip-off. The Northwestern women's basketball team brought home a 72-63 win on Saturday afternoon against Mid-America Christian, moving to 11-14 overall and to 5-12 in the Sooner Athletic Conference. The Lady Rangers took a 31-28 halftime lead and led by as much as 9 points two different times in the second half to down the Lady Evangels. Three players for Northwestern hit double figures, with Autumn Clue nailing six three-pointers and three free throws for a game-high 21 points. Rachel Wilzik added two trays while scoring 15 points, and Annalena Ferreras kicked in 10 points. Audrey Richen Richmond led the Lady Rangers in rebounding with eight boards. The Lady Rangers head to Shawnee on Thursday for a 6 p.m. game with Oklahoma Baptist. Wow, a lot going on in sports. Thanks, Becky. Now let's take a look at upcoming events coming up right here on campus. Northwestern's Alva Scholarship Drive will take place February 24th in the Student Center. Northwestern's Arts Society will be having a baked item fundraiser February 25th in the Percival Field House. You know, that organization has done a lot to raise money. I know they raised money one time to um, send to Haiti, and they, they always have something going on where they're raising money. You guys been watching the Olympics? Yes, I have, and I've been enjoying them. What about you? Yes, it's been fun. We've watched the moguls, mm -hmm. which we were commenting, my wife was commenting the other night, how they have to, their knees, like we don't know how their knees withstand all of that I bouncing. I don't think I can handle it. No. <laughs> so, somebody was telling me earlier, I think it was one of our cam operators, um, about how somebody had had six knee replacements in, in, since they've been doing that sport. So in figure skating, China did really well. I know, Xinjiang and Zhao Hongbo, I think, mm -hmm. won first place. And then, yeah, China won gold and, um, and silver. Mm -hmm. Those did really well. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We'll see you